Okay, this is going to be part six. Now, we've already seen him lie about what the soul means in the context of the Old Testament. Going to, uh, he likes to go into the uh, dictionary. He didn't go to the dictionary there. Uh, Ezekiel 14, Noah, a, uh, a, uh, uh, was it, uh, Job and, um, Abraham, uh, could keep their own righteousness. That's blessing by association. None of these guys, when they read that, ever read the rest of the passage, by the way. When they go to Ezekiel. That's their verses. They love their death and life. See, every time he sees Perish, he sees uh, somebody dying eternally. When Perish is also by physical death. But this, and then he goes up there, oh, oh, like this is like some absurd idea of faith alone. It's been taught by dispensationalism for 100 years, people. This is the, remember, Kim said Peter Ruckman invented this. This is not the view of dispensationalism. And this haughty, arrogant, lying attitude about twisting scriptures. And he says only he's only done a few videos. He's done enough, enough videos on, uh, on dispensational salvation. Uh, Noah, Daniel, excuse me, not, not Abraham, Daniel, Daniel and Job, preserved their own lives. Why, why is it blessed by association? Verse 17, I read verse 16, the last one. Or if I bring a sword upon the land and say, sword, go through the land so that I cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters. Can't be talking about eternal life. You can't deliver your son or daughter with eternal, uh, uh, their eternal life. That's a person, that's an individual thing. This is dealing about these men's righteousness couldn't even preserve the land. As much as righteous as they were, they should only deliver themselves, so that he would deliver them. And remember, in Daniel, he was taken out of Jerusalem before the, the city was destroyed. He was delivered. Remember, the good people were taken out of the of, of, the, of Jerusalem. His attitude is: we haven't read the Old Testament again. And he gets he always gives the answer: "Oh, so I'm read the Bible, I'm read the Old Testament. Like, we haven't read the Old Testament. Now we read the Old Testament. We just can read English. You can't." You're reading into things that aren't there. Uh, so, let me see here. So this is part six. Let's go here. He's about 30, what, 40 minutes in here. I'm curious to see what this is about a lot. Let's see if he gets a lot. Back there, God was looking at how people live, whether or not they were following what he said. Yeah. Ezekiel 18, verse 20 through 30. Yep. We have here in this passage in Ezekiel. This is this is the, this is, they love this verse. They love the eighteen. Where people, if the wicked convert, God will bless them. If, he, if the if the righteous don't convert, God kills them, and they think that's the only eternal life. What I like to call the lordship salvation of the Old Testament. Yeah, see that people? He's laughing. They're putting lordship salvation into the Old Testament. You think God would put lordship salvation anywhere? And he laughs. And you think this guy is a fine individual. When he's lying to you, deceiving you, thinking God would put Lordship salvation in any testament, any time. What's going to happen in Ezekiel 18 is people are talking about those God would bless us, God would curse. Not about eternal life. This sounds, oh, 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 oh. sounds like Lordship salvation because it's if you do right, you're saved. If you do wrong, you're not. No, that's that. No, talking about eternal salvation. Now, one word in Ezekiel 18 is talking about eternal salvation, people. You can't find it. It's talking about people dying or living, blessing or cursed, but not eternal salvation. That's they can't tell different types of righteousness. These guys are so dumb, they can't figure out different types of righteousness. Thank you, Jesus, your Lord. Follow him as your Lord. Well, Jesus wasn't named in the Old Testament, so they were just following Jehovah. But look at what it says. Go there with me in your Bible in Ezekiel 18. Ezekiel 18, 20. This is God speaking to Ezekiel and the children of Israel under the Old Testament law still. Yeah. And it sounds like works. It, it, it doesn't sound like it. It is works. Yeah. For blessing and cursing. I'm following what Jesus... For, for blessing and cursing. Just because this guy's illiterate, you shouldn't be illiterate. There's context involved. This is not about eternal life. This guy is such an idiot. This is about blessing and cursing. In the Bible says, if for us today Jesus says it's through faith alone. But in the Old Testament we have Jesus, the angel of the Lord. The, the Lord of the Old Testament is the same Lord of the New Testament. Jesus is Jehovah. The 
because Jehovah said, beside me, there's no Savior. And he said, I'm the Creator. What is Jesus? He says, I'm the Savior, and he's the Creator. So it's one God, not three different gods like some people try to say nowadays. It's one God. These he says three different gods. Three are one. <laughs> Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, First John 5, 7. So there's a work set. Now listen, listen to this, Ezekiel 18. I hope you found it. Three persons. Go back here. That making Jesus your Lord, following him as your Lord. Well, Jesus wasn't named in the Old Testament, so they were just following Jehovah. But look at what it says. Go there with me in your Bible in Ezekiel 18. Ezekiel 18.20. This is God speaking to Ezekiel and the children of Israel under the Old Testament law still. And it sounds like works. It, it not just sounds like it. It is works. I'm following what Jesus in the Bible says. And for us today, Jesus says it's through faith alone. But in the Old Testament, we have Jesus, the angel of the Lord. The, the Lord These of the guys Old will never tell you the context of what the chapter is about. Read the chapter, people. It's talking about God saying he's fair. The Jews were considering, hey, God, you're not fair. And he says, I'm very fair. And that's what the chapter is about. He says, I'll, I, I don't judge, I'm not going to curse the, ch the children of the, of the fathers who are doing wrong. Each one is going to be blessed or cursed based on their own actions. They start you in the middle of a, a chapter and don't tell you what the chapter is talking about. The, the word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, What mean ye that ye use this proverb concerning the land of Israel, saying, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge? As I live, saith the Lord God, ye shall not have occasion any more to use this proverb in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine, O mine, as the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. I'm talking about the person now. But if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right, and hath not eaten upon the mountains, nor hath lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, neither hath defiled his neighbor's wife, neither come up, uh, near to a mischievous woman, and hath not oppressed any, but hath restored to the debt of his pledge, hath spoiled none by violence, hath given his bread to the hungry, hath covered the naked with a garment, he that hath not given forth upon usury, neither hath taken any increase, but that which, that which, uh, that hath withdrawn his hand from the iniquity, hath executed true judgment between man and man, hath walked in my statutes, and hath kept my judgments to deal truly, he is just, he shall surely live. He shall surely go to Abraham's bosom. No, he shall surely live, saith the Lord God. He's saying about going to Abraham's bosom. Old Testament is the same Lord of the New Testament. Jesus is Jehovah. Because Jehovah said, beside me, there's no Savior. And he said, I'm the Creator. What is Jesus? He says, I'm the Savior. And he's the Creator. So it's one God, not three different gods like some people try to say nowadays. It's one God. These three are one. Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. First John 5, 7. So there's a work set. Now listen, listen to this. Ezekiel 18. I hope you found it. Ezekiel 18, verse 20. See, what do you say verse 20? Why don't you read what the chapter says, the context. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall yeah, be... Yeah, Max Bauer's got a thing. Physical salvation doesn't equate to eternal salvation. Yeah, Max, Max got a brain. Unfortunately, these guys don't have any brains. <laughs> brain dead. On him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Hmm. Hmm. But if, Why don't you read the beginning of the verse and talk about what the Lord's talking about? They never do. The wicked will, Just like they didn't read the rest of the verse in Ezekiel 14. That's why I call them Bible corruptors. Turn from all his sins that he hath committed, and keep all my statutes, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live and shall not die. Now what do you mean, a guy won't die? You mean he's still going to be alive today? Uh, you got a guy asking Max Bauer. Yeah, he just answers yes or no. Uh, is, is not taking the mark uh, and, and doing any work. No, because God keeps them by grace. That's probably they not take the mark, because they're not deceived. They're not deceived. Who? Why do you take? What people take the mark in the in the uh, in tribulation because they're deceived. The elect don't get deceived. In fact, that God shortens the days so they don't get deceived. A thousand years later? No. 
There's spiritual death. There's physical death. And we know... That yeah, the spiritual death and physical death. Now you got it. Jesus talks about, you know, the second death. So it's talking about, clearly, whether a man goes here or here. No, yeah, he said, don't worry about going to Abraham's bosom. It's not physical death, of, of, uh, uh, physical death, uh, physical life, or physical death. He said one word about Abraham's bosom. It says in verse twenty-two, all his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall. So not you got to put that in there. There's, no phys there's no, nothing about eternal life there. It's about God being dealing equally and being just in how men, how these men are living. He mentioned unto him in his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. Physical life. 23. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live? 24. But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness, and committeth iniquity, and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned. In his trespass that he hath trespassed, and in his sin that he hath sinned, in them shall he die. Right? If, yeah, die. Physical death. If a man died in his sin in the Old Testament, where do you think he went? Do you think Abraham's bosom was where all the sinners went? He died He died as a sinner. He died because of his sin. Doesn't mean he was unsaved. He died because of his sin. Go to 1 Corinthians 11 see Christians dying in sin. They didn't go to hell. <laughs> They died. They died because they sin, though, didn't they? It was here, and it was based upon whether or not he was in his sins or not. Now it continues. They died because of their sins. God killed them. In First Corinthians eleven, God's killing Christians for sinning. There's a sin unto death. It doesn't mean you go to hell. There, verse twenty-six. When a righteous man. Turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and dieth in them. For his iniquity that he hath done, he shall die. Again, verse 27, when a wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul. Yes, yeah, life. Soul refers to physical life there. Alive. Alive. He save his soul. It's physical life. Alive. It's not physical life, physical death. That sounds like a works gospel. No, that sounds like physical life, physical death, based on their works. And the context is, when you read that, God is saying, I'm not unfair. No one gets to heaven by their works, or Abraham's bosom by their works. Based upon whether you go to hell or not, based upon whether or not you do right and follow the law, do that which is lawful. Oh, you said no one gets to heaven, get to Abraham's bosom by keeping the law. Now he's saying he could. Or do wrong. See that? They just switch on you at a moment's notice. No one can get into Abraham's bosom by keeping the law, because you couldn't keep it perfectly. This is by keeping your physical life. That's Old Testament. Now what's sad to me is there are people that try to force that. What's sad to me is that you can't read. That into today. No one's forcing anything into today. We're talking about faith alone, because that's how God set, sets up his own uh, the system based on his attributes. You think God is going to put somebody into heaven because of their works. That's what this, this liar wants you to believe. That someone got to heaven, got into Abraham's bosom, and got to heaven because of the works. That's what he wants you to believe. That's your lordship salvation people. They say, well, yeah, you believe in Jesus, and you make him your lord, and then you do works. And the fact that you're doing works, that proves you're saved. Nobody. No, that, that might be in the Bible, but it's not in our dispensation. That's back might there. be in the Bible. So he's saying lordship salvation. God was lordship salvation, pushing lordship salva salvation in the Old Testament. That's why it's, you think God is going to have the Lordship of Salvation in any testament? You're still trying to put yourself on the Old Testament. You've got a false gospel for today. You liar. Ezekiel 18 has nothing to do with anybody's eternal salvation. It has to deal with their walk. God's going to kill you in the land. Ezekiel was under, uh, talking about the judgment of the land. He doesn't look at context. None of these guys look at the actual chapter with, and read the chapter. Just like in Ezekiel 14, they don't read the chapter and talk about blessing by association. Because today it's not a works. But back there, yeah. God was He's telling you someone get to heaven by their works now. Was looking at whether or not a man was keeping the law or not. And his soul depended on it. Yeah, he can get to heaven's bosom with the law. 
Now, this isn't Robert Breaker's opinion. This is Biden. It is Robert uh, Breaker's opinion because he can't read. Verse 28. Well, verse 27. He shall save his soul alive based upon him turning from his own wickedness and doing that which was lawful and right. I want you to see this with your own eyes in case you're not there with your Bible. That's what the Bible says, not Robert Breaker. Not my opinion. Okay? You say, are you getting upset, Breaker? No, I'm just so sad to see so many people, and actually it's not that many, but seeing more and more people contact me and say, Brother Breaker, I don't follow you anymore because I believe they were saved by faith alone in the whole Bible. And I'm like, ever read it? Just asking because it wasn't faith alone in the whole Bible. Under here, there was some words. Well, verse uh, 18, uh, excuse me, Ezekiel 18, 28, because he considereth and turneth away from all his transgressions that he hath committed, he shall surely live and shall not die. Yet saith the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. O house of Israel, are not my ways equal? Are not your ways unequal? There was somebody that left a comment one time in one of my videos or one of the things, and they said, Robert Breaker such a liar. It's always been through faith alone in the whole Bible. Otherwise, God wouldn't be a just God because he wouldn't deal with people in an equal way, and it would be unequal. And my mind instantly went back to... This is femininity. Now let's see feminine voice now. His emotional immaturity is coming out. The guy is a liar and a fraud. Notice that. that. And he wouldn't be right, just. That's Max Fowl's argument, by the way. So I'm thinking he's on the Max Fowl, because Max Fowl says exactly that. He wouldn't be fair to, to have eternal life one way for people and not another way for other people. They have to earn their eternal life, or we get it by grace alone. God wouldn't be fair doing that. Do Ezekiel 18, and I said, you sound just like the people of Israel. <laughs> you, it doesn't matter what you think. God deals with people the way he wants, when he wants. You sound like a Calvinist. That's what Calvinism teaches. When you say unconditional election is unfair. A Calvinist comes back with the same argument. God deals with the way he wants. <laughs> and uses Romans 9 in the dispensation that he wants. And we can't, in our own little mind, try to change what the Bible says so we can believe it a certain way. The Bible isn't saying what you're saying, though. It's still a physical life, physical death, cursing and blessing. Not told me anybody getting to Abraham's bosom by, or by faith alone, or by, uh, by works. He's telling you you can get Abraham's bosom by works. After denying it. We have to go by what it says. See, he says, uh, we well, have to go back. That, remember, remember he wrote the article about interracial marriage, people. And he used the scriptures to support being against interracial marriage. Then he came back and said, well, that's my, only my opinion. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, verse 30, Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. All right, let's go to Ezekiel 33. The iniquity should not be your ruin. So it's a nation. He's telling Israel to repent as a nation. That's why he just, he just brought, ran over with people. Here's an interesting verse. A lot of people try to apply this verse to today and say this has to do with soul winning, but this is still Old Testament. This isn't for us today. But Ezekiel 33, 5, it says, He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him, but he should take his warning, shall deliver his soul. Say unto him, verse 11, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn. Live, death, live, death. Turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? Yeah, it's not like destroying the nation. Therefore, not sending the nation to hell. It's not like destroying the nation. It's going to scatter the people. Thou son of man, say unto the children of thy people, the righteousness of of the righteous shall not deliver them in the day of his transgression. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turneth from his wickedness. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinned. Yeah, and one word about Abraham, Abraham's bosom, eternal life, it's like life, life and death. But when I say to the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trusts to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered. But for his iniquity that he hath committed, he shall die for it. He shall die. 
Again, when I say to the wicked, thou shalt surely die if he turn from his sin and do that which is lawful and right. If the wicked restore the pledge, give again that he had robbed, walk in the statutes of life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live and he shall not die. Yeah, every time he guys sees die, he sees eternal life. <laughs> his mind is shot, people. None of his sins, I'm in Ezekiel 33, 16, none of his sins that he hath committed shall be mentioned unto him. He hath done that which is lawful and right. Yeah. That's not going to give him Abraham's bosom. He just said no one gets Abraham's bosom by the law. How's that going to get you Abraham's bosom? And he shall surely live. So God has given him the message of repent. Yeah, to live. Live or die. And do right, and then God won't put you in hell. You'll live. Your soul will not worry about hell. It's talking about living and dying. Physical death. You'll live. But if not, your soul will die. Talking about living or dying, your soul will die. It's a person. Will die. You will die physically. And then about going to hell. He just read in, in read something that's not even there. Go to hell. You liar. And he says here again about not being equal. Verse 17. Yet the children of the people say the way of the Lord is not equal. But as for them, their way is not equal. When the righteous turneth from his righteousness and committeth iniquity, he shall even die thereby. But if the wicked turn from his wickedness and do that which is lawful and right, he shall live thereby. Verse 20. But ye say the way of the Lord is not equal. Well, how of Israel, I will judge you every one after his own ways. Or after his ways. Yeah. For physical life, for physical death. Nothing about salvation. Sounds like God said, I'm going to judge you based upon your works, your ways. For physical life and physical death. That was the uh, Mosaic Covenant. Under the Old Testament law, it was a works covenant set up. No. For sal it wasn't for salvation. This is called begging the question. He's asserting what he needs to prove. He hasn't said one word back on the Mosaic Covenant where they said eternal life was involved in that walk. It was a walk. It had nothing to do with their their eternal salvation. If you don't believe that, then would you do me a favor? If you have some scissors, take them and start cutting these verses out of your Bible. We need to cut them out. We just read them correctly, Robert. You're illiterate. You've been brainwashed. You don't see the verses what they actually say like in their context. That's you foul-mouthed liar. What you'll have to do. You have a choice. You can believe what man says, or you can believe what the Bible says. No, we can believe what the Bible says, how it reads, and not how you read it. Because you can't read it. I'm going to go with the book, and I'm not going to... Yeah, you just can't read. You're illiterate. These verses out of my Bible, I'm going to stick with what they say, because I write... But you're illiterate. Because every time you see soul, you think spiritual. That's why you wouldn't go to the dictionary, Webster's Dictionary, where soul was talking about human life. That's why you wouldn't do that. That's why you wouldn't read the context. What would perish means? It can mean physical death, not spiritual death. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 19 through 21. They love Ezekiel. Because Ezekiel's talking about life and death, cursing and blessing. The nations are coming under judgment. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because thou hast not given him warning, he shall die in his sin. And his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned, also thou hast delivered for thy soul. Old Testament! Can't we? So life and death, physical life and death. And I mean, in one word about eternal life. Works. Faith and works. You don't have to say works alone. But it's not faith alone. Works. You don't say works alone. But all he talked about was works. You don't have to say works alone, people. But all Ezekiel talked about were works. There's one word about faith. But he wants you to believe that it's it's not faith alone because all he all he talked about were works. So if if it's not no if this if if it's just it's no faith involved there then it's works alone. So he's telling you based on Ezekiel this liar that these guys can get into Abraham's bosom based on their works without any faith. All throughout that Old Testament, I never saw a but as deceived liar like this guy is. But he's totally indoctrinated. Now blood atonement is written in the law, and forgiveness is through the blood sacrifice in the Old Testament. 
But making a sacrifice, that was work. Yeah, you know, something you did. It's not work. Because it showed your faith. Again, they can't separate the idea of showing your faith as opposed to a work. So here's your faith. In the New Testament, the Bible says in Romans 3.25 that we're supposed to put our faith in the blood of Christ. Was there faith in the Old Testament in the blood of Jesus? No. You say, how do you know that, Robert Breaker? Well, no one's saying it was. But it was symbolically it was. It's like the Passover lamb. When they were when they were believing what they were told to believe in, Abel going back to make sacrifices but blood sacrifices, they might not have known it was the blood of Jesus, but they knew they had to bring blood. Because Jesus had not shed his blood yet. So How what? could you trust in something that hadn't happened yet? How did Abel trust in the blood? Because God told him to trust in the blood. It's symbolic. It was symbolic for them, and they didn't know what the blood represented, but they knew they had to believe in it. See, all those Old Testament sacrifices of the blood of animals were types of the coming. Yeah. And they were told to believe in the fact that the coming Messiah and the blood was somehow involved. And they were saved based on God looking forward to the cross and applying the blood to them. Uh, Christ, the Lamb of God, who would, who would die. But in the Old Testament, they didn't understand that. They didn't see that. Matter of fact, there's a lot of verses in in uh, the New Testament where it says that the, the the salvation even the angels desired to look into. And uh, I think it's Peter that says that that uh, they didn't understand in the Old Testament about what it was like in the New Testament. Yet they were looking forward and trying to figure it out. The, oh, angels looking into our salvation, <laughs> but they didn't understand. All they knew was God gave them a book of law that they had to keep. And whether they kept it or not, their soul depended on it. So they had to keep it. Get that, people. Now you say, well, Robert Baker, you're such a heretic. You don't know what you're... Uh, they couldn't keep the law, boy, Robert. You just said no one keep the law a while back. Now you're saying that their salvation depended on keeping the law. So which is it? They couldn't keep the law. You said that. Talking about because no one can keep the Old Testament law. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The law was given for them to follow, but they couldn't keep it. They couldn't keep it, so they were damned. So when they sinned against the law and offended it, and they did, no one ever lived without offending the law once at least. Jesus was the only one. He's God. What did they have to do? Well, the law said, bring a sacrifice. And that's part of the law. So by bringing the sacrifices, they were, they were keeping the law. So the sacrifice is written in the law. Yeah. And you said they can't keep the law to be saved. Now you're saying the sacrifices is what saved them. That when you do offend, then you must bring blood. Now Leviticus 17, 11 says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make it. Remember you said, he said, no one keep the law. But now he's saying the sacrifices were given at the part of the law. So if you made sacrifices, then that's what got you into Abraham's bosom? For your souls, for it is the blood that makes an atonement for the soul. Now, Leviticus chapter 4. Here's what happened if a man was under the Old Testament law and he sinned. He was Why did Abel bring sacrifices? No, I, I got sacrifices began with Abel. I mean with uh, the law. There were sacrifices back in Abel. Abraham made sacrifices. See what this liar is about? He just lies to you. The sacrifices would represent as types to understand the, the coming course, to understand that Jesus Christ is coming. They didn't understand it, but that's what the purpose of them was, to teach them. Supposed to bring a sacrifice. Well, that would be part of the law then. He had to bring that animal, and he had to be the one that sacrificed it. Let me read that to you. Leviticus chapter 4. And this, my friend, is a work. I was just in Choloteca, Honduras. Really hot place. It's a work. No, it's showing your faith. Just like the law showed your faith. You kept the law, you showed your faith. It's a sacrifice. He's telling you sacrifices to get your his bosom. A sacrifice was made. It's something you have to do. But it's not a work. It's not a work because it's come from your faith. I saw many times there was guys, and they were trying to pull a lamb. Uh, one of them had a, 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 cow, a cow, another one had a, a horse or a mule, 
and they were trying to get that animal to come with them, and that animal wanted to go over there or over there or over there. And so they're pulling, and, and, and the work that they were exhorting and trying to get that animal that's wherever they were trying to take it. I look at that, I go, wow. That's confusing ethic with a work. That's, that's not what the work means. The work means you're adding something to faith. It means the work is something that's not coming from faith. That's the issue of work versus faith. But if it comes from faith, it's fruit. And therefore, it's not a work. So the idea of effort is not the issue. The issue is, is it part of faith and therefore grace? Or is it something you're bringing with the flesh? That's a work. Because the Old Testament, when you say you had to take an animal sacrifice, imagine the work involved of having to pull that animal through the desert, because under the Old Testament law, what were they, 40 years in the desert, they had to make sacrifice, we had to pull that animal. Then it's, he, 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 it's simplistic thinking. He, he thinks like an idiot, like a 12-year-old. Like a, a that's effort. That's not a work in terms of faith versus salvation. That's effort. The issue is, does it come from faith? The Hebrews, the 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 the, uh, the heroes of faith in Hebrews eleven. By faith they did all the go the effort they did. By faith they did this. By faith they did that. By faith they did this. That's that wasn't the effort issue. That was the issue that whatever they did was coming from their faith. It wasn't from their own flesh. It was from their faith. They were depending on God, and therefore they produced those fruits, those works. The work they want, they want from the flesh. It was from the faith. So it wasn't now the effort that was performed. It was where did it come from? What was the source? And it was from grace. I had to cut its throat, and I'm about to read that to you. I had a friend from Alaska that was here a couple months ago, and he told me that before he came, his dad um, slaughtered a big, just gigantic um, cow or bull. I think it was a bull. He said his dad could barely get through it because the hide was so was so tough. And he was just having to saw on that vein in order to cut that. And he just, oh, his sweat running down his face. And I thought, yeah, yeah, Old Testament. That's what a man had to do. That would have taken work. So there was work involved in the sacrifice. Oh, yeah, you can bet your bottom dollar there was. So Leviticus 4.27, look at the law, what the law demanded, what the law said when a man sinned. Leviticus 4.27, if any one of the common people sin through ignorance, while he doeth somewhat against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be uh, to be done, and be guilty, or if he sin which he has sinned, come to his knowledge, then he shall bring his offering, a kid of the goats, a female without blemish, for his sin which he has sinned. Now watch what it says he has to do. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of the sin offering, and slay the sin offering in the place of the burnt offering. So he has to put his head on the animal, take the knife and go, and cut it. Yeah, that's effort. Why would he place his that's head it. on that? That's effort. That's not work. That's not work in terms of what we're looking at faith versus works. That's effort. We, he was 11, see what these guys did. But it came from their faith. And God blessed them because it came from their faith. Therefore, it was associated with grace. An animal. Signifying God for me in my place. Take the blood of this animal. And look what it says happened. Verse 30, And the priest shall take of the blood thereof with his finger and shall put it upon the horns of the altar of the burnt offering. And the priest shall take of the blood thereof with his finger. Uh, see, I messed up there. I went back to the first. Of all the altar, and shall pour out all the blood thereof at the bottom of the altar. Okay? So after he cuts the throat with his head on top, the priest is catching the blood so that the priest can then go offer up the blood. And then in verse 31, he shall take away all of the fat thereof, as the fat is taken away from off the sacrifice of peace offerings, and the priest shall burn it upon the altar for a sweet savor unto the Lord, and the priest shall make an atonement for him, and it shall be forgiven him. And if you bring a lamb for a sin offering, he shall bring it a female without blemish, and he shall lay his hand upon the head of the sin offering, and slay it for a sin offering in the place where they shall kill the burnt offering. And the priest shall take of the blood of the sin offering with his finger, and shall put on the horns of the altar of burnt offering, and shall pour out all the blood thereof, at the bottom of the altar. And, and I wanted to get down to verse 35. So I said verse 34, but I want verse 35 also. Verse 35. And he shall take away all of the... All of this yapping. And go to Romans 4. Even as David also describes the blessings of the man unto God, whom God imputeth righteousness without works. Without works. 
saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Here's David. He made sacrifices, but this, their sins were covered without works. God imputed righteousness without works. without, And that's personal righteousness. That's, that means that's God's righteousness. Not his righteousness, his own personal righteousness, but that's God's righteousness that we see. You receive God's righteousness without works. All he's talking about here, and all you got to do is go to Romans 4. At thereof, as the fat of the lamb is taken away from the sacrifice of the peace offerings, and the priest shall burn them upon the altar according to the offerings made by fire unto the Lord. And the priest shall make atonement for his sin that he hath committed, committed. Now watch the end of the verse. And it shall be forgiven him. Forgiveness of sins under the Old Testament law based upon a blood sacrifice. And you want to tell me that it was only faith? It was faith alone. The whole Bible, no, they didn't have to make the sacrifice. No, they didn't have to. No, the law commanded the sacrifice. So if you're keeping the law, then you would do the sacrifice. Otherwise, you're not keeping the law. And it was work. It was a lot of work to cut the throat of the animal. For your personal right. for your personal you for your personal righteousness. That's what you had to do to get your walk. But you see the imputed righteousness, like David said, without works. So there's where forgiveness comes from. It's through the blood. Now today it's different. But today Jesus is the Lamb of God. He sacrificed himself for us. This foul mouth lie can't read English. Then he rose again and went up to heaven. He took the blood off. That's why when he went for David, by the way, he, he, he glossed over him. When he did his thing on Romans 4. He didn't, and he, he skipped over him, his second reading. He skipped over covered. The sins were covered. Because they tried to make David like as a prophecy. But it doesn't, it doesn't fit because David's sins were covered. Put it up on the mercy seat in heaven for us. So it's not by our work. We don't have to do a sacrifice. It's through the work of Christ. That was their walk. We have a different walk. That's all. It had to do with uh, the issue of uh, uh, the salvation. That's what David said. Receive righteousness without works. Their works was their walk. They had to do things as part of their walk, their relationship with God. And it's through faith alone, believing that... That's not what it was like back then. That guy's an idiot. I don't understand how a man can say salvation was by built alone in the whole Bible. Because we can read, you can't. We read context. We understand God's character. That no one gets saved by keeping the law. No one gets saved in the out of Abraham's bosom if no one keeps the law. I don't see how he can say that. And then expect the body of Christ. The body of Christ. This is a fringe group, people. The dispensationalists, King James Bible believers, read James Knox, who defends the idea of faith alone. Dispensationalists have always taught faith alone. These liars are trying to tell you that they're the majority view, or they're not. They're the minority view. And Ruckman guys, and guys like this foul mouth liar, are fringe with his weird, bizarre views. To look at that man and say, he's a great Bible believer. He's a shallow person who has a very shallow understanding of the Bible. He just condemned himself. Just condemned himself. That's who he is. He's a shallow person with shallow understanding of the Bible. Because he doesn't know what he's talking about. I've read you verse after verse after verse. And not one of them said anything about losing eternal life. Not one verse that he read actually said anybody lost got eternal life by doing good or lost eternal life by doing bad. He just inserted that in there because that's what he wants it to say. Where it was through works, through works, through works. Yeah, that was their walk. When he started the, the thing off, he talked about their walk. This was their walk under the law. They had obeyed the law as part of their walk. And that's part of the works, is that when you did mess up and didn't keep the law, then you had to do the work of bringing your sacrifice and killing it yourself. Yeah. And that was part of your fellowship, to be forgiven. Now, now, let me show you another verse. Numbers fifteen twenty-eight through 31. With everything that I've given you, 
And I've given all this before in other sermons. There are he hasn't given you one verse that proves salvation by works, people. He hasn't given you one single verse that says what he wants it to say. Every verse can be explained with faith alone. And it deals with the walk. Physical life, physical death. Two people that will persist and say, no, 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 through, through the entire Bible, it's faith alone. It didn't depend upon their work. <laughs> These guys need you. I don't know how. You don't know how because we can read. You can't read, obviously. You just insert what you want to insert and distort it. Now, one verse that you give, Breaker, that said anything about anybody losing their salvation or getting their salvation, I thought about their walk under the law. What are they, 20 different scriptures that they're sending against to try to teach that? Oh, no. Every scripture you gave can be explained with faith alone for salvation. It had to deal with their walk under the law. It had nothing to do with their salvation. And David saying in Romans 4 very clearly, Blessed is the man who received in Peter righteousness without works. Without, received righteousness without works. But they said, oh, no, they were just cut off from the people. They still went to Abraham's bosom. They didn't go to hell. Well, I don't know where they went. If they were believers, they went to Abraham's bosom. If they didn't, they were torments. But it had nothing to do with the salvation. All right, well, well let's... Uh, uh, uh. Look at this. Numbers 15, 28 through 31. Numbers 15, 28. What happened to someone who died without a blood sacrifice? Someone who did not follow the law and make a sacrifice. What if they live back there and they sin, but they said, you know what, I just have faith alone. I just believe God's going to save me by my faith anyway. But they didn't obey the law and make a sacrifice. Were they saved? Not according to the scripture. What is it saying? <laughs> this is their walk. Numbers 15, 28 through 31. And the priest shall make an atonement for the soul that sinneth ignorantly. When he sinneth by ignorance before the Lord to make an atonement for him, it shall be forgiven him. Forgiveness through the blood atonement. He shall have one law for him that sinneth through ignorance, both for him that is born among the children of Israel and for the stranger that sojourneth among them. But the soul that do doeth aught presumptuously, whether he be born in the land or the stranger, the same reproacheth the Lord, and that soul shall be cut off from among his people. And they say, well, that just means he's no longer a Jew. Cut off. That's nothing to do with his salvation. If he sins presumptuously, purposely, he's cut off. He, he can still be saved. He still has to try. He, has, he, can't, he can't find a scripture that says someone actually loses their eternal security, salvation, because they sin. They're cut off. Look at the next verse that defines what it means to cut off. Verse 31, because he that despiseth the word of the Lord and hath broken his commandments, yeah. that soul shall be utterly cut off, yeah. his iniquity shall be upon him. Yeah. He's out of fellowship. He can't get back in fellowship. His iniquity's on him. He's cursed. That's nothing to do with losing salvation. So here, yeah, this, this guy's have no, no ability to think, people. His iniquity's upon him. So what? He just, he admits constantly, no one can keep the law perfectly, which means everyone dies with some sin on them, on the Old Testament. So it means no one got into, got into, uh, into Abraham's bosom. Well, he's alone. So let me stop, put this up, and this is number seven. See how he assumes, he puts in, he puts in this thing, well, look at this, uh, he tries, see how I've proven it. He didn't prove anything. His iniquity will be on him. So what? That deals with his fellowship. That deals with his walk. His iniquity is cut off. He has no relationship anymore. He can't get out. He, you know, it's, it's, it's it. He's done. He can't make any atonement for the sin. He can't make any sacrifices for the sin. He's going to be out of fellowship. He's going to become the curse. His life. It has nothing to do with salvation. But here's it. Oh, how can I say this? The body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ never taught this. Go 1909, 1917, Schofield notes, they didn't teach this nonsense. Only these idiots teach this nonsense. And all he does is read scriptures that talk about Old Testament works that had nothing to do with salvation. Because no one got any of those bosom by Old Testament works. They're cut off. They didn't go to hell. It's about going to hell. If they were believers, they went to Abraham's bosom. If they were, if they were all saved, they went to their torments. 
nothing to do with their salvation, they have to deal with their life, the physical life. So I'll stop with this up and I'll probably get to the rest of the videos about an hour left, uh, my next, uh, maybe tonight. Amen. Thank you.